You attach the front end to the power supply by adding four screws through the rear panel into the side rails. Screw number is 0624-0279. The next procedure will be adding the shield to the front panel When installing this shield, hold it up towards the edge of the casting, aligning your holes, keeping it as far forward as possible, tightening it with one screw, cleaner on your face plate. This removes any dirt or lint and also keeps the face plate from attracting dust. After applying this you have to polish it to avoid any streaks. Be very careful not to get any fingerprints on this. Then put it into your camera support. Next you apply the black shield. Put that against your safety plate. Then you apply your shock mounts. Set your shock mounts on the ears of your camera support and press down so the glue will stick. Write the serial number of your CRT on your paperwork. Clean the front of the CRT with a glass cleaner and polish this. Check the face plate for any, defect, any defects or bad spots, black spots, or possibly spots in the CRT itself. After this is cleaned, insert it into the tube. Being careful not to get fingerprints on the face plate.
take your CRT cable and push through the hole in the rear panel and lay your shield into the instrument. Pushing the tube forward from the end Slide your tube into the camera support. After your tube is pushed forward, slide your CRT shield forward over the ears on the camera support. Align with the holes on the deck at the rear of the instrument. Attach this with four screws, 2200-0105. You may want to put beeswax on your pause drive to hold your screw while you're setting it in. After you have all of your screws in, then tighten these. Using your bracket, which is a CRT socket, slip over the end of your tube. Check to see if your tube is straight. Push your tube forward and tighten. check tube to make sure that it is straight. If it is not, then it's back. Put your CRT socket on the back. Loosen. And straighten your tube. your tube being straight, put your blue filter on the front and your bezel. The next thing we add is our CRT cable. Fill the solder lugs on the pot, the center one and the one closest to the, the bezel. Tin the brown and the white jumpers in the cable. Inserting your white jumper in the center pin. And your brown jumper in the pin closest to your casting. Dress the cable down towards the bottom of the CRT shield. And under your shield.
your cable from your multiplier box that attaches to your CRT is twisted and laid under your shield. And your connector is fastened into the hole on the tube. Bend the cap down and form it inside. By following your color code strip on your shield, attach wires from the cable to the CRT. First your brown jumper, white violet jumper, and your yellow jumper. Using your jumpers from your CRT coils, attach to the bottom of your low voltage board. Dressing this wire to the side and up. Your white green wire from your CRT coil attaches to a pin on top of your board. Your black one next. Attach your blue jumper, violet jumper, and the white violet jumper. Folding these back and dressing them properly. Attach the yellow jumper to the board and your white jumper. You attach the blue jumper on the back side of the CRT shield to the first CRT pin. Then you add a white and red twin lead attach the white jumper next and then your red The next procedure will be your shafts or your extenders. Take the long extender through the hole down behind your gate board and attach to the coupler that was put on the back of your low voltage board. Screw this in, making sure that you push your button to see if it's off or on. Screw the extender down to where about half of the top is sticking out through the hole. Then you add your fine beam extender and screw into the coupler on this board. Screw it down the same to where when you put your buttons on both buttons will be the same. Then you put your beam intensity of extender on, slide it down over the pot to where the notch inside the extender slips into the slot on the pot shaft. Then your focus extender, do the same with it, slip it down over the the pot to where it snaps in. Tighten those by using four Allen screws number 
Be sure that your Allen screws are tight. Your next assembly will be your horizontal board. You prefab one resistor to this Add black spaghetti. <coughs> and crimp to the pin standing on top of your push button switch. Add your green knobs to your push button switch shafts. As you add your buttons, you may check your push buttons to make sure that your switches work. Using one washer, 2190-0016, Put this on the pot and install your board. On your left side, the board goes between the bracket and the BNC bracket. On the right side, it goes on the top side of your pot bracket. Be sure when you look inside against your front panel that your cable wires are not in the way when you put this board in. You take a chance of these being pinched. You put one nut 2950-0043 on the pot shaft on the front panel and tighten this. You add three of the 2200-0105 screws. Tighten these. Laying your instrument down. Put your screw between your BNC bracket, your board, and into your preamp bracket and tighten this. On the opposite side you put your screw through your board and into your bracket. After tightening your screws, cut the lead from your resistor, form it and slip it into the top of the BNC and solder this. Be very careful that your resistor lead is short enough that should it be bumped it does not fall down against your screw. Dress your cable down and into the connector on the horizontal board. Turning your instrument around, you attach your connector here with this connector on the horizontal board. After this is done, dress your wires down. Dress the wires across the top of the pot. Then you install your delay trigger board. Using caution on the circuit side, that the six solder joints from your push button switch does not stick out. These have to be cut off or after assembling they will touch your side rail. On this board you also add one resistor with your black spaghetti.
crimp this to the pin on the top of your push button the switch the same as you did on your horizontal board and after crimping solder this add your green push button switches to your shafts checking to make sure that your switch is working You add one washer, number 2190-0016, to the pot. Turning your board circuit side up. Put your pot shaft through the hole. Your push button switches through your hole, and the board is on top of the B and C bracket. Add one nut, 2950-0043. and do not tighten this at this point. You add one screw 2200-0105 through your board and into your B and C bracket. Checking to make sure that your push button switches are aligned and they do not rub on the window bezels. Then you can tighten this screw and the nut on your front panel. Turning your instrument over, cut your resistor lead form and slip this into the BNC. The same as on the horizontal board. Making sure that your resistor is not long enough that the lead will touch the screw. Then you solder this. Your next step is to add your extenders to your push button switches. Your mag times 10 extender always takes a blue knob. Press these onto your push button switch and then putting your finger on top of the extender press down to make sure that your shaft is seated on your switch. Then check your switch to make sure that it's working right. The next three extenders take green knobs. Do the same with these, pressing it on with your finger and checking to make sure it works. Your long extenders always take the blue push button knobs. The same with these. Pressing onto the switch with your finger on top, press down. After all extenders are in place, check knobs to make sure that your switches are working. Your next procedure will be your rotor boards.
Always turn your rotor around to where the slash is against the button. Put the cutout end inside of your extenders. Press it up. Press your connector into your board. On your next rotor board, put it in the instrument and slide it on your connector. The next procedure is adding your sweep shafts. Take your long shaft and apply Molycoat 557 lubricant. Spray this on your shaft to give it some lubrication to where your two shafts do not scratch together. Slide the top shaft on. Insert this through the hole and through your first rotor. Turning the bottom rotor to where your shaft will slide in, then you add your collars. Slide your two collars on and push the shaft down through your second rotor board. On the front panel, over your sweep shaft, you put your white wafer. Then you put your sweep knob on, pressing your shaft up towards the top to where it is even with the center of the knob. Then you install your floating core. top of this, you install your window knob. Turn the Allen screws out to where the knob will slip down over the shaft. With your sweep knob setting on off, your window knob setting on five, tighten your sweep knob with one Allen screw and your window knob with one Allen screw. Turn the sweep knob around to one. If the white line on the sweet knob does not line up with the one, you loosen your Allen screw loosen one Allen in the sweep knob and one Allen in the window knob set your white line on the one and tighten your Allen screw. Turning your window knob back to where your sweep knob is on off, turn your rotor around 
to the off position. Turn your window knob back to where it hits the stop against the sweep knob and tighten. Running through the positions on the knob, make sure that both knobs are aligned. If your window knob does not line up, having just a number in the center without showing another number, then you must go back to number one and set your window knob over. Keeping the window knob clear back against the stop. Then turning it to make sure that each number shows. Then you lay the instrument down. Turning your sweep shaft around and tighten your collar to the flat side of the shaft. Put your third collar on the bottom shaft and tighten this to the flat side of the shaft. Then you tighten the bottom collar against the top of the rotor board. Then you add one gray or one violet jumper. From your horizontal board to your trigger delay board. And just dressing this back. Turning your board with the circuit side up, you attach your white and red twin lead. Snap it into place by hooking on the connector and pressing. And you add a white brown jumper. And a gray jumper. bringing those around and attaching them to your horizontal board. Dress these by just pulling them back. Now we'll add the preamp assembly that we prefab previously. You start by adding your white blue jumper. Your short black jumper. The longer black jumper. And the white green jumper. And I see I have a cold solder joint on the LEDs. If you should find something like this, be sure and go back at this time and redo this.
holding your cable down, you lay your preamp assembly down, bringing your attenuator shafts through the front panel. It's easier if you take a Q-tip, press your push button shafts and lift gently. Pushing your preamp assembly forward, bring your shafts out. Using four flat washers, number 3050-0160, using two on each B and C. And two nuts, number 2950-0035. Attach these to your B and C's and tighten finger tight. Using one screw, number 2200-0149 and one star washer, number 2190-0005. Put through your horizontal board and into your bracket on your preamp board. Attach your twin lead cables from your preamp assembly to the square pins on the horizontal board. and dressing your jumpers. Next you will connect your delay line by using one flat washer number 3050-0071 and one screw number 2200-0143 and one split lock washer number 2190-0019. Tighten this to the hole in the preamp bracket. Now we'll add the vertical output board using a small amount of thermal compound on the bracket. Put this beside the CRT shield. Press into your preamp board. And tighten with four screws, number 2200-0105. After all four screws are in, then go back and tighten each one.
Attach the jumpers from the vertical output board to your CRT. The white one first and then the orange. Now we'll add the cowl shield. Using two of the 2200-0105 screws, one 2200-0143 screw, a flat washer number 3050-0010, and a split lock number 2190-0019. Put your bracket on using the two 105 screws. Starting these into the holes, but do not tighten. Using a white cable clamp, slip this over your CRT cable. Using your 143 screw, your split lock, and your flat washer, install this onto your shield. Then tighten the 105 screws. Install the white jumper from the solder stud to the pin on the back of the preamp board. Then you add your state display board, making sure that the pins from the low voltage board the contacts from the preamp board and the contacts from the horizontal board slip into the connectors. Press the board forward. The next assembly will be our knobs. On the line shaft, you use a white button On the fine beam shaft, you use a gray button. Checking to make sure that your shafts work. Your shaft for your beam intensity and your focus pot, turn all the way to the right. Checking your knobs to make sure that your Allen screws are out and do not affect the sliding onto the shaft. Press these onto the shaft, keeping them away from the front panel. Tighten your Allen screws, making sure that your, the line on your knob is equal on both sides. Turning each of your pot shafts all the way to the right, check the Allen screws in your knobs, and install your knobs by aligning the black line on the knob to the black line on the front panel, making sure that when you turn the knob to the left that your black line aligns with the black line on the front panel and tighten your Allen screws.
In your position pot, make sure your Allen screws are out on the knob. Put this over the shaft and align the black line on the knob with the black lines on the front panel. fine beam which goes on the top of your position pot. Check your Allen screws. Turn the shaft all the way to the right with the fine turned upside down the end should line up with the black line on the bottom knob. Tighten your Allen screw and turn all the way to the left. Turning your bottom knob to the left, the fine, the end in the fine should line up with the black line on the knob. Then you tighten the other Allen screw. On the delay pot, you remove the nut that you previously put on. Turn your shaft all the way to the left. To install this knob, you take the black mark have it perfectly straight against the top of the instrument. Tighten the inside checking to make sure your shaft is turned all the way to the left. Drop on the top knob. Turning the pot you'll have a zero above the black line. Turning very slowly, put your Allen driver into the screw. When the three reaches the black line, lift the knob and tighten your Allen screw. Your three lines should line up with your zero and the black line at the top when your pot is turned all the way to the left. Sweep veneer knob and the trigger hold off knob. Turn those until they click. Check the Allen screws in your knob. Drop it on the shaft. The black line on your knob should stop right in the center of the black area on the front panel. Again on your trigger hold off knob, check your Allen screws. Set your knob on your shaft and center it right to the center of the black area on the front panel. After tightening your Allen screw, should you turn your knob and your black line goes to the end of your black area, you then loosen your knob and turn this back. where your black line is right in the center. At this time we tighten the nuts on the BNCs of the preamp assembly. 
and you take the shafts of the position pots, turn those all the way to the right, check the Allen screws in your knobs, and set your knob on the shaft. This again should have the black line on your knob lining up with the black line on the front panel. On your attenuators, always make sure that the white line is sitting against the top of the instrument. Press these tabs on the back of your knob into the holes on your front panel. Add your lever switches, your lever knobs, and check to make sure that your attenuator is working. Add your white wafers. Checking your knobs to make sure that your Allen screws are out. Drop these onto the shaft of your attenuator. Set in your knob on point zero zero five, turning it to the left making sure that the white line lines up with the correct number on your knob. When you turn your knob to number one, it is not lined up correctly with your white line. Loosen your Allen screw, turn your knob, and set your one. Then tighten your other Allen screw. Turning your knob to make sure that your attenuator is working right. Do the same on your channel B attenuator. Turn your knob around to make sure that all of your numbers line up with a white line. Check your Allen screws and tighten. And then check your knob to make sure that your attenuator is working. <coughs> check the Allen screws in your cal knobs. Set these on the shafts on your attenuators.
After tightening one Allen screw, check to make sure that your pot is on the off position. Turn knob around to where you can read Cal and tighten other Allen screw. Do the same on channel B. You add the knob to your scale pot. Again, checking your Allen screws. Turn your shaft all the way to the right. Putting your knob on your shaft. At this time, you align the black line from your knob in the center between the black line on the front panel and the first dot. Tighten your Allen screws.